Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for um, inviting me to speak on this very prestigious panel, um, on this very prestigious forum. Today, uh, I will be going through virtual consultation in eye care, basically what we need to do when a patient is interested in telehealth and is coming to our practice or is available to us virtually, and what are the tests that we can conduct, and what are the various offers that are available to us to conduct these tests. Well, the main objective of telehealth is to use the technology that is available to us or develop technology that is um, that we allows us to reach people who are unreachable to us. Um, we really got thinking after the pandemic that we that patients did require us to be available to them. And one of the main learnings we had, or one of the main things that pushed us to develop a new software called OptoLife was the fact that patient, we could not have access and patients could not have access to us. Very briefly, to go through a checklist of telehealth, um, um, what are the things that we require is the robust, a ro very robust software for telehealth, a video calling software. Personally, we use Zoom and Gmeet, where we use screen sharing. Um, portable equipment, which is easy to use and accurate. Um, good and high speed, uh, high and good and stable high speed internet. A laptop, desktop, or iPad setup for practitioner and patient. Note that this is not possible on a phone as the screen is too small. Um, a larger screen is, the larger the screen, the better for the patient. Well, here we speak about OptoLive, which is something we've developed over the past few months post the pandemic. Um, it's a telehealth software for eye care. The reason we developed it is that most telehealth consultations post COVID were happening for red eye, dry eye, you know, digital eye strain, um, and any bumps, uh, and lumps on the lids. Now, we wanted something a little more detailed. We wanted to address the issue of uh, refractive error, any retina problem, any uh, glaucoma problem, which a patient may be suffering from. So we developed this software, which allows us to conduct more in more tests, which can help identify and maybe even treat these issues or these diseases. Well, now we have a patient that's interested in telehealth, what what do we do then? Well, before a patient signs up, in our experience, they're very interested in what is about to happen. So a good way to start would be a brief explanation of the process of what we're about to do next. Um, this can be done over a short call or can also be done over a, maybe a pre-made pre WhatsApp message or a pre-made email that you can be sending to them. Um, E-consent, again, has to be taken from the patient um, there are standard formats for that, which we, which we use. A basic history at this point and understanding the patient's uh, requirement or the understanding the patient's problem. Chief complaint is, is important to be uh, understood at this time. So using the communication medium, we can take this information from them. Um, collection, their name, date of birth, etc. All of those things can be done. Following this, we set up an appointment with them. We generate a, a Zoom or a Gmeet link where we're about to have our uh, appointment and make the devices, which I'll be speaking later on, available to them. Now, if you have a, a, a vision center, which is uh, the setup needs to be there, uh, done over there, where uh, your know, laptop or uh, the distance needs to be correct in that area, the setup needs to be done uh, correctly there. Or if your uh, devices need to be sent to their home, or to their office, you, uh, these have to be sent before the appointment is started. Uh, basic, uh, since we've been conducting them at home, we've been in our homes and the patients have been in their homes, we've been using sterilized spoons, spatulas, a scale and an inch tape to measure distances accurately and to use occluders um, while doing the eye exam or the eye consultation. This is the standard format of a consent form. Um, now, once we have set up the appointment once we have done the um, preliminary part we start the teleconsultation the first step is to introduce yourself uh, you may have patients who already, who already know you or you may be have, seeing an all new patient altogether so you introduce yourself tell your background tell them where your um, clinic is where your practice is and also share what brief you will be doing so moving forward to the tests uh, the first thing we need to do in OptoLive especially is calibrate your screen this basically allows us to um, make sure the letter size on my screen as well as their screen stays the same. So this ensures accuracy that 
the letter sizes stay same and we are getting the right results. Collecting history like you would in an offline, um, offline uh, consultation, we conduct a very thorough history which can be recorded in OptoLife. Uh, the ocular systemic and medical history can, has to be uh, collected and the existing eyeglass power along with the reason of eye exam, the chief complaint needs to be taken because this will determine what tests we are about to do. A detailed patient history can be recorded in OptoLive um, as you can see here and here. So moving forward to the first test. Um, the first test that we will be doing is distance visual acuity which can be done at three which is to be done at three meters. Here uh, we will place we'll ask the patient to measure the distance between their screen to the um, to the to their chair or to where they're sitting has to be three meters and we can start testing. The results are mentioned at the bottom here. Near visual acuity is the second test. We can use the spoon as occluders uh, if as you see over here she's using a book but we can also use a spoon or spatula to cover her cover individual eyes to assess the visual acuity which is again recorded inside OptoLive. Contrast sensitivity is also done. Is, there's a digital chart available for that which is again available in the software. The next test that we can conduct online is the color vision exam where all of the Ishihara 1224 plates are displayed and we can assess if there is any color vision defect. The other tests that are included are the Amsler tests which are for uh, which this comes in the standard black and white, white on black combination as well as these other combinations which are for glaucoma and any other neurological disorders. The screen, it becomes a full screen like this. So the, when the patient is looking, we ask them to occlude as a normal Amsler is done and focus on the point. Any defect is again recorded in the, in the software. The next test which we can conduct is a red desaturation test. Um, over here, we can assess all four quadrants of the, uh, of the retina. Um, we, can, uh, we can also increase the in intensity on each quadrant to see and to record how much intensity needs to be increased in which quadrant so that, um, so that we can assess that which, which um, area of the retina may be compromised. Another test which we can do, this doesn't require OptoLive which can be done over just a video, uh, a standard video calling platform is convergence. Um, we, we ask the patient or we ask the child or the adult to, to place the pencil between the camera and, and, and themselves and bring it closer while we look at the eyes. And we can also, once the patient says that maybe the over here the pencil or pen is appearing double, we ask them to place as many fingers as they can between the pencil and the, the pen and, and the nose and we use this as a measure while keeping it on a scale. So we place these four fingers on the ruler and we assess how far the distance was from the nose. Here we can see convergence and NPC being done on uh, convergence being done for a patient. Another test that can be done is the cover run cover test uh, and the alternating cover test. We usually suggest uh, someone else in the house helps with this, but patient can also do it themselves and we can look for any phorias and tropias. Um, we ask the patient to focus on the camera and then for, for this is for near and also focus on the ball which is about 10 feet away to see if any phorea or tropia is present. So a detailed binocular function evaluation um, for that we're using Binox as a software which is available through OptoLive um, through a link through OptoLive uh, where we can detail uh, e uh, evaluate in detail any binocular vision dysfunction. We have also developed um, a clip which is something like this which clips onto your your phone like that and increases the magnification of any smartphone. Um, this was actually an inspiration from, from one of the devices that we ordered from abroad which was very very expensive. Now we are developing these devices in indigenously in India. Um, so that we can, they can be made available for slight, uh, for a lower cost in um, for these virtual examinations. It increases the magnification of any smartphone 
um, and we are able to get um, magnified images like this one where we've seen a patient's uh, we detected cataract in a patient and we are able to refer or direct him to for surgery. Moving on to objective refraction, now if we have a patient that is um, not, av not having perfect visual acuity, we have certain devices which are portable and uh, easily usable which allow us to get to the new prescription or the updated prescription. The most basic one we've noticed is the focometer where we have a device which is um, which is can be used like a telescope. Uh, in our experience this has, this has been the easiest and the quickest to use which gives us a good idea of, of the patient's spherical component of prescription. The next step would be to the only downside of the focometer is that it can you can easily overcorrect. So you can use the duochrome charts available inside the um, inside our software, which allows us to refine the spherical component. And I will speak about the cylindrical component after this. The IQ vision check is also a self-refracting device, which is available and um, and is accurate for cross-checking. And the S log click check is a newer one, which which we hope to introduce or use in the future. Now that we've got our objective prescription, what to do with the subjective refraction? Using the same charts that, were, that I showed to you earlier, we have come up with refractive paddles. So you see these two paddles over here, the red and the black. One is a plus paddle and one is a minus paddle, um, which has different spherical prescriptions and cylindrical prescriptions in place, which allows us to, to ascertain the new prescription which, which uh, is required by the patient. Um, this is again developed indigenous, indigenously by us here. Um, so the power range can be changed, can be extended as per the requirement of the patient and many different paddles can be created. As of now, we have them from plus or minus uh, up to plus or minus six. So using these uh, paddles, we can uh, come to the new prescription. In case, like I said, of a cylindrical prescription, we can use the astigmatic fan as well as cross check from the uh, either the IQ uh, vision check to understand what the axis is. So using the astigmatic fan and the, uh, the objective refraction, we can understand what kind of cylindrical prescription the patient may require. Coming to duochrome, the duochrome uh, gives us an idea of overcorrection or undercorrection. So if we're using the focometer, there's a high chance for overcorrection. So we use the duochrome to, re to reduce the prescription or increase the prescription as, may as it may be. Dry eye evaluation with fluorescent staining. Uh, this is something which, uh, which we found very interesting is that we can convert any phone, um, any um, device or the torch of the phone into, a, um, into a UV light which can help with seeing fluorescein stains. So if fluorescein has been administered by, to the patient uh, in a vision center, using your phone or using your laptop screen, you bring the, um, uh, this blue colored screen in front of the um, eye and we'll be able to see the fluorescein staining and evaluate it. This coupled with the, with the eye clip is very effective. Another way to, uh, to um, diagnose dry eye is using infrared thermal imaging cameras which uh, measure the, measure the um, tear evaporation on the, uh, and, the co and the surface temperature of the eye and the tear film. We also have certain flow charts which are available um, in, inside the uh, software for red eye, neuro-ophthalmology, which help us get to our diagnosis quicker. Retina imaging. Now this is something which is asynchronous, which basically means that we cannot be live and avail uh, we cannot uh, see the results live, but can be done using a port portable retina scanner and port or port portable retina imaging and an optometrist being sent to either your vision center where uh, uh, multiple patients can be aligned or to a patient's home to do to get images. For a glaucoma evaluation, we have been using uh, MRF visual field software. Again, this can be done live, 
but in our experience internet connectivity is very important in this since the stimulus is very small so uh, internet connectivity is a main challenge with uh, uh, MRI visual fields but can be done with you live over zoom over gmeet to assess their visual field the retina evaluation as i spoke about in the last slide is uh, can be done by sending uh, the devices and the optometrist to the home the IOP also can be used, can be um, measured using an uh, application tonometer and patients can be suggested to keep eye care tonometers which is a device which patients uh, can purchase and keep in their homes even though it's, it's expensive but we hope in the future these, these kind of devices uh, can come down and become as prevalent as a standard blood pressure machine or a sugar um, uh, measurement device. The next thing which, which allows us, which is great about telehealth and OptoLive is we can connect with ophthalmologists of different specialities for a real-time diagnosis for our patient. So if we have um, a ret uh, an image of a retina in front of us, we can, we can connect with the retina specialist and give the diagnosis to the patient and treatment to the patient in real time. Another aspect of, uh, of uh, OptoLive is interesting, we'll be able to measure the IPD as well as the frame and lens, all frame and lens measurements can be done um, from ED to uh, to lens diameter and you see you see in these images that we have taken measurements and fits many spectacles using just the software. Another development which, which we have done over the um, last few months is created uh, models of certain spectacles which allows us to dispense or, or give spectacles to patients without them having to try them on. Um, with augmented reality, uh, vision centers with no inventory and optical stores with no inventory can be are possible. And for our brand, my brand Noi Eyewear, we have already replicated and implemented this online on our web shop. This is one of the early models which we had where we are just placing this model that was created on an Instagram feed to show you that, uh, on a Facebook feed to show you that can be placed on anyone's face uh, to see how the spectacles look on their face. Contact lens fitting and evaluation. Um, over the last few months, we've seen contact lens patient upgraded to better uh, different contact lenses and also in certain situations, taken K readings using portable keratometers. Uh, for fitting and evaluation, we've connected live and seen and assessed the eye for any redness or any um, fitting issues. We've also seen a few low, uh, low vision patients which um, using AI and using counseling and certain applications, we have been able to make their vision, well, their, uh, their ability to function better. To wrap up, um, the usage of these, uh, these softwares and these devices is completely up to us. Um, we can make them a very interesting addition for a private practice. Uh, we can open a whole new private practice with us not having to be there. Um, uh, so making ourselves available virtually um, and opening vision centers or placing vision centers for community outreach where patients can come and seek your expertise and your um, guidance to see better. Thank you very much. And, uh, Hope it was informative.